Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day's going really well. And I am in Luminar today, and I am going to share a workflow video, uh, share some filters that I'm going to use on this image, and talk about what I'm using them for and why. And it's really, the point of the video is more about the what am I using them for and why, as opposed to the specific filters. So let me just show you the image. I have this photo here I took in England, and um, one of the things I often do is, before I edit, I'll look at a photo, and I'll start trying to decide what it is I need and or want to do to the photo. Um, the flip side of that is, I'll get a photo and I'll just stick a preset on it or look, or to start hitting it with filters and trying to make adjustments and see if I can come up with something cool. Um, and, and I do that a lot, but I often find I'm more successful in my editing, um, and frankly, it's less of a meandering path. If I first take a few moments and kind of study my photo and just say, you know, what do I like about the photo? What do I want to bring to the viewer's attention? Um, what needs to be enhanced slash, you know, fixed or updated or whatever, you know, filtered um, in this photo versus uh, not, like that sort of thing. And so this video is to encourage you to maybe hit the pause button every now and then, and I'm super guilty of not doing this, which is why I'm talking about it, uh, but hit the pause button and study your photo before you leap into it um, and start editing. So as I pause and look at this photo, you know, a couple of things come to mind. Uh, number one, I think it's slightly crooked. Um, no surprise, this is me taking the photo. Uh, my photos are always crooked because um, this was handheld. Even when I'm on a tripod, I'm crooked half the time. Anyway, um, it's, a, it's too bright. Um, it's, it's a little washed out. It's also, there's, there's no real color pop and there's plenty of color that's available. You can see blues, yellows, and greens. Um, kind of actually blues, yellows, and greens as you go, you know, from the top of the photo down. So th there's plenty to work with there, but uh, nothing really stands out. Um, I like the composition. I mean, I'm biased probably. Uh, not probably. I am biased because I shot it. The path kind of meanders up there to the castle, and you can see it kind of curves around and curves towards the door of the castle. So I kind of like all that. So I don't really need to worry about, you know, how do I crop it to accentuate the... Uh, the um, the composition, but it's more so about what's the edit. However, I am going to do a slight crop. I'm going to slightly straighten this thing because I feel like it's slightly in need of a straighten. That looks kind of close. Uh, and then I'm going to do a 16 by 9 crop, which I do a lot. And I'm just going to basically get rid of some of that dead space in the uh, in the foreground because I just don't need it, right? So here's the image. Now the first thing I would do, thinking about the things I talked about would probably be to get the develop filter and Accent AI. I, I get Accent AI here only because I just wanna see what it does, not because I need it. But uh, in this case, no real contrast in the photo, so I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna take the highlights way down, um, and already I'm liking it better. The colors are starting to pop, although I don't know how much I love the color, uh, so I'm, I'm gonna fix that in a minute. I think a little bit of clarity is, uh, is well advised here. And you know, I think even with one filter and very very little um, work, I've, I've got a better looking photo. So now I'm gonna try this Accent AI and see what it does for me. If you notice the sky, it's really giving it a nice pop. There's the zero and then you know here's 100. I don't wanna go to 100. Um, so I'm gonna go like, what am I at, 60. I like the blues there. I think they look pretty good. Um, maybe a little saturated, but we're gonna play with that. And the colors are starting to pop, but again, a little bit saturated, so once again, I'm gonna pause and consider where I am. I think the next thing to do, I'm gonna try the tone filter. Um, I'm kind of playing around here, and I'm gonna try brilliance and warmth. So tone is gonna, I'm gonna do a tiny bit of uh, smart tone and a tiny bit of contrast. Uh, the contrast is really gonna pop that uh, shadow that's running through the grass of that tree, which I kind of like how it sort of intersects the middle of that uh, uh, lawn, if you will, but I'm gonna pull up Smart Tone a little bit, and I think maybe take sh uh, highlights down a tiny bit more. Okay, I'm cool with that. Um, brilliance and Warmth, I think I'm gonna go a little bit lower on the vividness because the colors are really starting to get a little crazy. If I show you the before, that green is really electric, that's like an HDR green, and I'm getting, you know, if I'm not careful, I'm getting into the realm of clown vomit, as I've talked about before. So I think I'm better there, but I'm, I'm not quite there with the color. So I'm gonna get um, HSL, which gives me great control over color. And if I could close the filter menu, there you go. Sometimes I feel like my finger gets stuck on the mouse. Um, 
I'm going to start with the green. It's too bright. It's too just neon, and grass doesn't really look like that. I mean, keep in mind, it, the photo started like that, so we've come a long way. It's, it's getting some more punch, but uh, it's a little bit much, um, so even for me. Um, so green, I'm going to take that down a little bit. I think I'm also going to reduce the luminance of the green just slightly, uh, and that shadows that grass a little bit more. Um, you know, you can still see the big shadow of the tree coming through there, but I don't know, it was just getting a little bit bright for me. Um, I think the hue of this yellow that's coming across this castle, I, I don't really like it. So I'm going to go into the yellow and take it a little bit left. It makes it a little bit more on the orange side, and then I'm going to go to the saturation and take that down a little bit. And let me see about taking the saturation of the orange down. Let me see what this HSL has done for me. There's the before, electric green grass. It looks like a, a nuclear soup. Um, and then the castles, the color, the yellows is not really right for me. So now it's a little bit tamer in the yellow. I might pull back a little bit of the saturation and uh, in the yellow and the uh, orange. But I think overall, there's the before. If you're looking at the castle, the yellows and the after, I think we're, we're doing better. Now here's what come in with uh, structure, and that's one of the things I like. I'm going to add structure twice, actually, because I'm going to use it two different times. And that's kind of the next thing I'm thinking about is I want to give a little bit of pop to that castle. So I'm going to add some structure there and just come in and kind of crank that up a little bit. Now, um, obviously, it's currently being applied globally, so I'm going to get a brush, and I'm going to mask it in with a smaller brush, and I'm just going to paint. Oh, I'm on the mat. Well, you know, I'll just leave that on so we can kind of see where I'm going. Um, I'm just kind of painting this into the castle because all I'm trying to do is get some of that structure to really pop on the castle wall. And I actually think I'll do along that wall as well. And then maybe shrink this a little bit. Whoops, not that much. Come in here and add a little bit here to some of the top of these, uh, these castle towers and along this side. You don't have to be perfect when you're doing this kind of stuff. Um, I think, generally speaking, my, my approach with things like this when I'm brushing them in is cover the main body of it and you know accentuate the, the biggest parts of it and, and don't worry so much about the edges. Now, if you're changing color significantly or the exposure value or something, you need to be careful because that would look really weird. But things like structure, I could I could do skip those edges and you may or may not be able to tell. In fact, you may not be able to tell a whole lot about structure. Let me say done and see the before and the after. Let's zoom in a little bit and try that one more time. There's before. If you just look at these castle walls, that's primarily where, where my eye is drawn. And after, it's giving it a little bit of punch, so I think that looks nice. So I'm gonna go back to fit. And now I'm gonna use structure a second time. And this is gonna be my favorite little trick, which is the negative structure. And that's basically softening up details. So actually, I'm gonna go over here to this mask, and I'm gonna say mask copy, and I'm gonna come over here and say mask paste, and now I'm gonna say mask invert. And there we go. Now, um, let me show you what this mask looks like. It's basically just the same mask, uh, except inverted, so I need to erase it from here, because I don't want any of that. Um, as I said, it wasn't a perfectly clean mask first time, but it's uh, you know it's good enough for government work, as they say. So what I did is basically just drew the details down everywhere else in the photo and applied them fairly heavily to the castle wall um, or house castle. I don't really remember the place. In fact, I can't even remember the town. Um, my friends were driving. But what I've basically done is uh, I'm trying to draw your attention to the castle. I think you're led there anyway along this path visually and then um, you'll be looking at the castle. But I wanted to soften up some of the other details. Um, I like skies to be soft. And in this case, I kind of like the grass being soft as well. Okay, now I'm gonna go, um, I think what I wanna do is get structure one more time. And I'm just gonna say structure. And I think what I wanna do is add a little bit of crunch to, the, um, to that sidewalk or that path because I think you're naturally, your eye is kind of drawn that way. And I wanna accentuate that a little bit. So. I'm gonna grab the brush, I'm in paint, and I'm just gonna paint that in here to the uh, this little pathway. You can see how it's bringing up that detail and giving you a little bit of crunch. So um, let me see what my mask looks like. You know, it's not bad, it's not great, that's okay. Um, everybody's cool with that, right? Um, there you go, so I'm gonna say done. And that was really just to accentuate the pathway a little bit. 
I may come back over here and further soften some of that grass and sky just to kind of further um, draw the contrast between the crunchy structure of the castle and the path and the softer sky and the grass. And that's really it. I mean, I think there's the before and there's the after. Here's the, the sliding door, sliding window thing. Um, I think we came a long way. I, I might would sit here for another 15 minutes and play around just because I like to do that. But I mostly wanted to talk about my approach to editing and how I, I, I like to hit that pause button because it's easy to get a photo and especially if you're excited about it, like if you just came back from shooting, get really excited like I do, I'm sure, and you just start throwing filters and doing stuff and saying, wow, that's cool, look at me go. Um, and I do that all the time, so I'm not sounding, hopefully hopefully, I'm not sounding judgy there because I'm talking about myself. Um, I do that all the time. I come back from shooting, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to do that photo. Uh, and then I just start doing stuff and I don't really think about it until I'm halfway through the editing and I'm like, wait, wait, like, what am I doing? You know, slow down, Jim. So, um, this is a message to myself and hopefully it helps you as well to say, hey, slow down, take it easy, think before you leap, if you will, and um, consider what it is you're trying to do with the photo, how you're trying to draw the viewer's attention into the shot and how you're trying to keep their attention and what you want to accentuate versus kind of hide. Just things like that, the things to think about, what colors you want to pop, how you want to do that, and then start to sort of formulate a mental plan about, hey, you know what, if I'm going to fix the light, Accent AI might be good for that, or maybe the develop filter or whatever, adjustable gradient, etc. So there's a lot of different ways to do things in Luminar. It's very powerful, so many flexible tools. Uh, just take the time to think about it, slow down, and come up with uh, your plan, and then, and then attack. Um, so that was really it. Just wanted to kind of share my thoughts on that, share this workflow, and I hope it uh, provides you some insight and maybe some inspiration. And thanks for watching, my friends. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're having a great night or great day, and I'll see you real soon. I'll be back with more videos. Take care, have a great day, and adios.